First, let me ask you a few questions. When you think of basketball and Japan, what comes to your mind first? And no, please don't say Kuroko or any other anime or manga. You'd probably think of Rui Hachimura. He's only the second player born in Japan to get drafted to the NBA. Now, there have been other Japanese players who've played in the NBA like Yuta Watanabe or Yuta Tabuse, but they both went undrafted. Then, there was also a guy named Wataru Misaka, a 5'7 point guard who got drafted in 1947. However, Misaka was American, born and raised in Utah, so he's not considered as an actual Japanese player. Fun fact, Misaka was actually the first ever person of color to play in the NBA. So anyway, Rui Hachimura is only the second player to get drafted from Japan. So, who was the first guy before him? How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today I'm talking about this guy. A man by the name of Yasutaka Okayama. Standing at 7 foot 8 inches tall, he was the tallest player to ever get drafted to the NBA. And also back in 1981, he became the first player to ever be drafted from Japan. Born and raised in Kumamoto on the island of Kyushu, Japan in 1954, Okayama lived a rather normal and peaceful life. Compared to other Japanese cities, Kumamoto was relatively small and the island of Kyushu is disconnected from the main island of Honshu, where the major cities like Tokyo and Osaka are located. Okayama grew up like most other Japanese men back in the 1960s. He worked hard on his studies and had the goal of getting into a good university. On the side, he played sports but his main focus was on judo, a martial art form of self-defense. In fact, according to his interviews, judo was his true passion and he seriously worked on it as he became a black belt. And eventually, he wanted to become a master and teach other kids judo too. As a kid, he was inspired by his teachers and throughout middle school and high school, judo was the sport he loved. Just one problem. The dude was a freaking giant, even as a kid. If you knew you were gonna grow to 7 foot 8, 330 pounds, why the hell would you need to learn self-defense in Japan? The average guy in Japan can't even reach his face if they tried to throw a punch. In fact, according to his biography, he was officially recorded as the tallest man in the entire country of Japan. Because of his stature, he succumbed to the fate of many people who are over 7 feet tall, and that was the pressure to play basketball. While many other tall people around the world have probably played basketball at some point in their lives, it wasn't really a thing in Japan. It definitely was not as common. Basketball in Japan was not popular at all, and back in the 1970s, 1980s, it wasn't something you could do for a living, at least not within the country. After graduating from high school, Okayama would attend Osaka University of Commerce. It was here when he started to play basketball more and more, partly by his own choice, partly because, I mean, he grew to 7 foot 8. If you're that tall, you gotta try basketball at some point, right? Even though he did not like it at first, he slowly started to grow into it, as the sport in Japan saw more support in the upcoming years. Funny enough, Okayama was given the nickname Chibi, which translates to short in Japanese. It's quite ironic, but Chibi can also be used to call somebody cute. And that's how he got his nickname. He was quite a cute little fella. After graduating from college, he started working towards his goal of becoming a pro basketball player. In the early days of the Japanese Basketball League, Okayama would be the pioneer that helped build and grow the sport. He would play for the Sumitomo Metal Industries. And yes, that's an actual team name. Back in the day, Japanese teams would be named after companies that sponsored them. And it just so happens that a steel manufacturing company decided to sponsor his team. However, by the mid to late 1970s, despite playing professionally in Japan, he was still an unknown prospect because nobody really paid attention to Japanese basketball. But a few NBA organizations were watching him, closely. In the 1970s, after traveling to America and briefly watching the Portland Trailblazers practice at the University of Portland, it sparked an interest in him. He now wanted to play in the NBA, although that was all but a far-fetched dream. Some teams actually knew about him, mainly due to his absurd size, but most teams did not know anything. He wasn't particularly exciting or talented, but his height obviously made him stand out. 
And when it comes to basketball, even the tallest, clumsiest, slow-footed 7-footers usually get a chance. And Okuyama, being 7'8", was given that chance. Shortly after leaving America and heading back to Japan, in the 1981 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors selected him with the 171st overall pick, the 8th round of the draft. Yeah, they had that many rounds back then. At 26 years old, Okuyama now had his chance to play in the NBA. In an article from 1981 that covered this draft selection, it stated, Quote, Speaking through an interpreter, Okuyama said in a telephone interview from Tokyo that he was surprised by his selection by the Golden State Warriors in the June 9th NBA draft. He said he was flattered and honored that a professional team would think enough of his ability to pick him. And according to Warrior scout Pete Newell, it wasn't just some fluke selection. Newell scouted him extensively and said, He's a very intelligent player, and he knows where his teammates are on the floor. He reads defense as well, and he's equally adept at passing with either hand. For such a big guy, he had a surprisingly smooth touch around the rim, and had an above-average basketball IQ. His passing was the strong point of his game, and something that stood out, because you don't really see many centers who could pass like him. Okayama, like I mentioned earlier, had a tremendous amount of respect for the NBA, but he also wanted to stay in Japan and build up the popularity of the game back in his home country. When watching NBA players, he described them by saying, quote, When I first saw the pros, I thought they were very elegant. They made the game look easy, like a work of art. I never thought I could dream of the professional ranks in regard to myself. But as the years went by and I became bigger, I put pro basketball as a goal I could strive towards. Unfortunately, it was also around this time that Okuyama discovered he had a tumor in his pituitary gland, which is the reason why he grew to be so tall. That was very dangerous, and moving to America would mean he'd be so far away from his home, from his family that was always a part of his life. Also, in his biography, it stated, quote, He was also concerned about his potential playing time, not wanting to sit at the end of an NBA bench worried about his contract. And as with all early foreign drafted players, the political climate of the times was not favorable. In the 1980s, the relationship between America and Japan was getting better, but still not very good. It didn't help that the Japanese car industry was crushing America's car industry, so a lot of American car workers were losing jobs and they resented the Japanese for, well, making better cars. Basically, the xenophobia towards the Japanese was still very common and there were still tensions from World War II. It's one of the reasons why European legend Arvidas Sabonis did not make the jump over to the NBA as soon as possible. During the Cold War and Arvidas playing for the Soviet Union, yeah, there were some tensions there too. So anyway, despite efforts from the Warriors trying to sign him to play in the NBA, Okuyama decided against that and felt more comfortable staying in Japan. For the next decade until 1990, he would remain in the Japanese Basketball League and continue working on his craft. During this time, he also participated in a couple of international competitions as well, mainly across Asia. In the 1980s, there weren't that many people in Asia who were 7 feet 8 inches tall, obviously. However, there was one guy by the name of Mu Tiezhu, a 7 foot 6 basketball player from China. He was the only guy in the entire continent who could match up to the size of Okayama. In the FIBA Asian Championships, China and Japan would play each other and it was a huge story. Two giants, two countries with their national pride on the line. Not much is known about what happened in the actual game, but according to Okayama's biography, this is what happened. Okayama and Tiezhu were caught in a battle of national pride. A Taiwan magazine went so far as to feature a photograph of the players on their cover with the heading, Chinese Communists vs. Japan. Fierce intensity described the battle between the two, but it was Mu Tiezhu that was counted as the victor by most accounts. Nevertheless, Okayama remained one of Asia's dominant big men, leading the JBL's league in scoring and rebounding in the 1981 season. It was pretty hard for me to find the exact numbers, but he did lead the JBL in scoring twice and rebounding three times. By 1990, Okayama would retire from basketball, although he would stick around and coach for a few more years. Fast forward all the way to 2019. Now an older Okayama, still watching basketball, recognized the potential of the new up-and-coming Japanese star, Rui Hachimura. 
Unlike Okayama himself, Hachimura is a legit prospect. A lottery pick, a guy who has all the potential in the world to succeed in the NBA, and the first Japanese player to be selected in the first round. Okayama praised him and also said, quote, I was drafted in the 8th round. He's a first rounder. He's genuinely the first Japanese. Of course, I want him to win the Rookie of the Year though. However, when reflecting back on his own career, Okayama has some regrets about not making the jump over to the NBA. He had his chance to join the Warriors in the 1980s, but he turned it down. Who knows how good he could have been? And that's all folks, that sums up the story of Yasutaka Okayama, the tallest player to ever be selected in the NBA draft. Although he never played a single NBA game, his selection is of huge historical significance, and he was one of the first to pave the way for basketball in Japan. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, thank you everybody so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.